Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf, and welcome to my show, The Dr. Leaf Show. If you haven't yet subscribed, just press the little subscribe button and you'll be notified when new episodes come out and you'll be kept up to date on all things relating to the mind and mental health. In this episode today, we're going to talk about the dirty dozen. And what do I mean by the dirty dozen? Okay, these are areas or ways of categorizing what you're going through to make them tangible and accessible. So let me give you an example first from my from my clinical practice. I've worked for 20 I worked for 25 years in clinical practice and I've done research on the mind brain connection. I've been studying the non-conscious mind and how you are powerful as a human and you are able to change your brain and change your life and create your realities. I use neuroscience and quantum physics and, and various different sciences to explain my theories and research. I've written lots of books that help help you to do these kind of things. So I've taken complex science and made it very practical so that you can get your mind under control. Because I can tell you, you know, I don't I can tell you what you already know. And that's that if your mind is crazy, so are you. And we're all a little bit crazy and that's the nice thing to know is that we all have our issues, we all have to deal with our issues. But there's really ways that we can deal with our issues if we actually realize how much control we have. And as a mind specialist, I really desire for you to understand the power of your mind. So I'll give you little examples to help you in these in these shows and to watch them. Don't you're going to really learn from these and learn so much stuff and the materials will really help you. Okay, so to come back to to this today's episode about the dirty dozen. I had a patient that came to me the one time who was really battling with concentration and focus and various different you know, learning issues and initially that was what I thought was the problem because that was what the referral was and I was in my mind work I've, I've done a lot of work with learning disability and would teach people how to think and how to learn and build memory it's been a big part of my research and a big part of the work that I did anyway in working with this young man it very soon became evident that there was a lot more going on than just a learning issue. So initially, I also thought, well, it's probably related to, you know, maybe being teased about not being as good academically as what he sh he could have or whatever. But that, you know, those kind of emotions. But that wasn't really the case. This this young man was going through a lot more. There was a lot more torment going on inside from a various different situations that had occurred in this young man's life that he could not talk about and it was related to that it, for himself he was not able to process it because it happened when he was quite young um, the environment that he grew up in was was very challenging it was very fundamentalist in terms of certain beliefs religiously and so on and it was very 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 hard for this young man to be able to truly express his true identity and to really be himself and this would had created a complete disconnect between what he believed and what he knew he should, supposedly should be believing and functioning and how he really felt about functioning. And he made some bad decisions and got himself caught up in various situations and ended up getting experiencing a lot of toxic touch. Now, let me, before I carry on, in this book called Who Switch Off My Brain? Toxic Thoughts and Emotions, I have um, a whole section on the Dirty Dozen. And the Dirty Dozen are 12 areas or 12 areas that you can categorize trauma and toxic thinking and issues into. One of the big things about dealing with stuff, and I know this from my own experience and experience working with my patients and from the research, is that we are humans, as humans we like order, we like to make sense of things. So the Dirty Dozen is a way, it's a, it's a way of organizing information, organizing the issues that you've experienced into some kind of meaningful category. When things are in categories, we can then make better associations. We can group things. We can it becomes manageable. It becomes something we can control. As soon as we see, feel like things are out of control, that's when we fall apart. That's when we feel like there's no hope. But control brings hope back. So, the dirty dozen is a way of grouping, organizing, and categorizing what you've gone through into twelve simple categories. Either just one or two. Generally, there's more than one category involved because they do cross over to a certain extent. But you have like a main category, and you do that yourself. I mean, it's as simple as taking a piece of paper. And you could do this right now and writing down your issues and saying, "Okay, what is this predominantly dealing with? What are we predominantly dealing with here?" This is what I did with this young man. I said, "Okay, there's a lot more going on here." And I believe that the root of your learning issues are basically part of the emotions that you're currently going through. There's something that's going on and we need to address that root. And then I think your learning issues will 
resolve themselves and obviously a good learning technique which is also what I teach is going to be valuable for you because building your brain is part of your healing too so we had a, a dual purpose going on there so I made him write down and this is a technique that's so simple I just made gave him a big piece of paper and I made him write down on that big piece of paper um, just what his major issue was that he felt in his life and it didn't come out the first session it didn't come out the first month he started a process it started a process of journalizing journaling um, the different emotions and eventually getting to the core it took about it honestly did take about the first three weeks that I was working with this young man before we started getting some idea of where the core issue was and the first as, as this jumble of words started that didn't make sense at first started coming out on this page and a little bit every day by, by around about sort of the end of the third week we sat together and started trying to make sense of it so the first thing they did was take the dirty dozen and we said all right let's categorize these what do we see let's put a check, check mark next to each of these different things and let's see is that one that one's related to touch that one's related to toxic love that one's related to toxic touch again that one's related to toxic face that one's related to toxic touch again and so we went through we took the 12 areas I explained what the 12 areas were to him and I said okay let's try and categorize this chaos into some kind of order and what we found that was the majority of the little ticks were toxic touch so that seemed to be the main category and then the story came out the story of what happened to that young man and I'm not at liberty to share that with you but it was a very traumatic situation a series of traumatic situations that happened as a result of the lack of being able to be who that young man really was and that then affected his schoolwork which resulted in the learning problems and so once we addressed the call by categorizing he felt like he had control that's where it was toxic touch from that situation from the lack of identity now we can address that so now we could use another technique that I call the multiple perspective advantage which is incredibly powerful the ability we have as humans to literally stand outside of ourselves and observe our own thinking we can do that okay I explain that in this book I explain the dirty dozen um, in this book and I explain the techniques of how to do everything I'm saying in these two books okay so using the multiple perspective advantage we could stand back and analyze now one of the things that is very important when you work with a dirty dozen and work with dealing with stuff like this is that it's very draining emotionally and you can feel like oh my gosh I can't do this so it's very important to do a little bit at a time don't spend hours at a time doing this I recommend you don't spend more than 16 minutes at a time and that sounds like such a weird number but that's from scientific research 7 to 16 minutes a day don't spend hours you're going to get yourself caught up in a cycle of toxicity so limit your time number one and then number two be very objective use your multiple perspective advantage stand back and observe your own thinking take that stuff and I told this young man take all the stuff which is painful it's very sore it's a lot and there's all kinds of associations branches growing on these trees that are starting to come back take it and put it into a room and into a sealed room in a building with windows put it in there and stand outside so that you're safe you're not in it you're observing it very important so you objectify the situation you stand back and you look at the situation that's happened to you so it's not you inside the window inside the emotions which will just kind of keep you stuck and it gets too painful and you will leave it alone and suppress it and carry on with whatever toxic behavior you've developed to try and deal with that to try and hide it you're not going to do that you're actually going to stand back observe your own thinking get into this toxic uh, stand back and observe this toxic situation and say that's not who I am very important it's who I have become so if you've become that you can unbecome it because there's a beautiful principle called neuroplasticity that I've been researching for 30 years and neuroplasticity is the fact that your brain can change as a result of how you think so when you think you can change your brain your brains where you store your memories so and your memories are the root of what you say and what you do so you can't just speak and do whatever you're saying and doing is coming from a root and that root are the memories that you've built into your brain so you can change your brain so you can stand back you can observe your own thinking and you can realize that's not who I am that's who I've become I'm not in it you're objectifying it you're outside of it and you can actually look at that stuff in there and you can say okay this is a really ugly painful room you may not even be able to stand close to it and then you can start working on redesigning it you can actually work on 
facing each issue as you have the time as you have the courage you don't have to stick your, you don't have to expose yourself to all of that at once as you have time I mean as you feel ready you can do that and then the categorization becomes very helpful because then what happened with this young man is over a period of time we worked through this we started getting more categories very important part of this I got the family involved there is nothing like family therapy if your family is not dysfunctional obviously dysfunctional families it can be pretty difficult but there's always someone that's willing to help you so either your family a friend a loved one and if you can't find anyone go to your local church community your local find someone that you feel safe with that you can start working through these issues with that you feel the courage because when research also shows that when you are in a loving non-judgmental environment when someone's there just listening to you just hearing your story and maybe you don't want to tell them everything but just the mere fact that you can talk about something that that will change your brain chemistry it'll change how your neurotransmitters flow you'll have more of the neurotransmitters flowing that will make you physically feel able to deal with the situation your resilience increases you have a certain type of genetic um, a special kind of genetic switch deep down inside your part of your brain called the hippocampus that deals with memory and deals with converting short to long term memory and when when you're in a loving environment that activates and it increases your resilience and your ability to cope with the situation. So I've said a lot of different tips. I've given you a lot of different tips here. At the core of every behavior is a root. To get to that root, you're going to have to try and get some sort of order and chaos, out of chaos. It feels chaotic when we're in the toxic zone. The dirty dozen that I teach over here is a way of taking that and getting order. You start by starting to write things down over a period of time. You will find as you progress through 21 day cycles, every, mm -hmm. every few days you'll get some level of revelation. And as you get that, eventually you'll get to a point, and there's no predicted time, but around about 14 to 21 days, you can start getting to the point where you can start really analyzing that stuff and getting some sense out of it. You can use these categories to help you to label it. As I said, checking off check marks, getting some kind of understanding and handle on that getting that situation into the window as early as possible in this process, objectifying it, using your multiple perspective advantage to be able to deal with that situation, and then taking your time to work through it and getting loving support. That's a lot of information, but it's so doable. I've seen the results in my own life, my children's lives, the lives of thousands of people that we reach through our clinical practice and the people that I'm reaching now. And I encourage you to have hope and to believe in yourself because I believe in you. I believe in humanity. I believe in the power of the mind. I believe in love. And I have seen it at work. And I have seen it scientifically to be accurate. So you can do this. And that's why I write the books that I do. That's why I do what I do. That's why I have this TV show. To be able to help you to become a better person. To be able to help you realize your dreams. To be able to help you realize the purpose that you have in life and to realize that there is a better way and to realize that you have the ability to change your circumstances, that you can bring order out of that chaos and you can start living into the life that you know instinctively you deserve. Thank you for listening to me today. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf.